Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. In this video, we're going to look at increments and slope. In calculus, one of the main focuses is looking at how values change. And if we're looking at two separate quantities, looking at how changing one of them affects a change in the other one. And a lot of times we'll use functions to represent these relationships because functions are a good way of describing how one quantity can affect or can depend on another quantity. So for example, we could look at the distance that somebody is walking as a function of time, how long they're walking. Or if we're talking about a diver diving down into the water, we can look at the pressure that they're feeling as a function of how deep they are below the surface. Now as we're looking at the changes in these specific variables, those are called increments. So for example, if we're looking at a change in time, we use the Greek letter delta to represent change. So if we talk about delta t, that could be a change in time. What we would do is we would take the ending time and subtract off the initial time. Or if we're talking about a change in distance, or delta d, that would be our ending distance minus our starting distance. Or if you're looking at the graph of a function, we could also talk about the change in the x values as the ending x minus the initial x. Or similarly, we could look at a change in the y values as the terminal y minus the initial y value. So in this first example, we're going to look at finding the increments delta x and delta y given two specific points. So we're starting at the point 1, 3, and we move over to the point 4, 5. So to calculate delta x, we're going to take that ending x value minus the starting x value. Well, we started at the point 1, 3. So I'm going to call that 1. That's going to be my x1 value. The 3 will be my y1 value. As far as the other point where we ended, the 4, 5, that's going to be my x2 and my y2. So if we want to calculate the delta x, we're going to subtract those x's. And we're going to take 4 minus 1. So we've got a delta x, or a change in x, of 3. Now similarly, we can calculate delta y, so a change in the y values, by doing that ending y and subtracting the initial y value. So here we're going to be taking 5 and subtracting 3 from it. So it would be a delta y, or a change in y, of 2 units. In this example, we've got a diver descending below sea level. He starts at a depth of 20 meters, and he descends down to 25 meters below sea level. And the pressure that he's feeling increases from 2.988 atmospheres. It increases up to 3.485 atmospheres. And we want to find those increments for the depth, so delta D, and also the pressure, delta P. So if we look at delta D, we're going to take that second depth and subtract off the initial depth. So he ended at 25 meters, and he started at 20 meters, and we subtract those and get a delta D, or a change in depth, of 5 meters. Now similarly, if we wanted to calculate the change in the pressure, or delta P, we would take that ending pressure minus the initial pressure, so the 3.485 minus the 2.988. We subtract those, and we get about 0.497 atmospheres as our change. Now as we start to dig a little bit deeper into functions, the variable y is a linear function of x if the ratio of the increment of y to the increment of x is constant. So if we've got two points on a graph, we've got x1, y1, and x2, y2, that ratio of the increments is just the slope of the line that connects those two points. So let's say we've got ourselves a line passing through the points 1, 3, and 4, 5. When we're finding the slope, the slope is the change in the y value over the change in the x value, delta y over delta x. Now similar to what we did earlier, to calculate that delta y, we know that we're going to take y2 minus y1, and to calculate that change in x, or delta x, that's going to be x2 minus x1. So my first point, that 1, 3, is my x1 and y1, and that 4, 5 is my x2 and my y2. So on top, with the y2 minus y1, we're going to go 5 minus 3, and on bottom with x2 minus x1, we're going to go 4 minus 1. So on top, 5 minus 3, we get 2. On bottom, 4 minus 1, we get 3. So we would say that this line has a slope of 2 thirds. Now this example is a little bit different. We're given a line that goes through the point 2, 3, and it's got a slope of negative 2. 
we know that it has somewhere along the line an x coordinate of 3.6, but we want to find the associated y coordinate that goes with that x value of 3.6. So if we think about how we're calculating this slope, that change in y, we took the ending y value minus the initial y value. And what we don't know is that ending y value. So when I set up my slope fraction, I'm going to leave that ending y value as just y. The other y value from the first point is 3. So the change in y would be whatever that ending y value is, minus 3. As far as the x's go, we know that we have an x value of 3.6, and that initial x value was 2. So this would be how we set up the slope fraction. And we know that the slope is negative 2. So when we divide this stuff out, we're supposed to get negative 2 as our answer. Well, we can actually simplify down the denominator of that fraction on the left-hand side. So I'm not going to change the y minus 3 because we don't know what y is. But on bottom, if we take 3.6 minus 2, that's going to be 1.6. And that's still equal to negative 2. Now, looking at this fraction, we want to solve to try to get y alone. So I'm going to take that 1.6 that we're currently dividing by. And to move that over to the other side, I'm going to have to multiply both sides by 1.6. So we're going to get y minus 3 is equal to negative 3.2. Now to solve to get y alone, I have to get rid of that minus 3 by adding 3 on both sides. So we're going to end up with a y value of negative 0.2. So that point on that line would be 3.6 and negative 0.2. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.